equal to 74.5% of the share capital with voting rights.
1,881 proxies or subdelegations uh, have been granted to the appointed representative to pursuant to Article 135 of the CLF. I ask uh, Professor Marchetti to provide uh, the necessary information and carry out uh, the preliminary steps to be able to declare today's meeting constituted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Pursuant to Article 1214 of the GDPR, I inform you that the personal data, name, surname, place of birth, the residence and professional qualifications of the participants in the AGM will be uh, acquired in the forms and within the limits related to the obligations, tasks and purposes provided for by the regulations in force. This data will be recorded in the minutes subject to manual and computer processes and may be communicated and disseminated also abroad outside of the European Union in the forms and within the limits strictly related to the obligations, tasks and purposes provided for by the regulations in force. The list of persons entitled to participate by proxy or subdelegation indicating the number of shares held by each and the delegating shareholder shall be attached to the minutes. There is a recording system in operation for the sole purposes of facilitating the work of the minutes. The registration will be available on the website. There is a simultaneous translation service from Italian into English. And as recommended by CONSOB, financial analysts, journalists and qualified experts are able to follow the proceedings by means of the aforementioned recording. Pursuant to Rule 5.2 of the Rules of Procedure, the Chairman's Office has been set up with Umberto Baldi and Stefano Sparzani as its members, and um, the fulfillments required by statutory regulations and the provisions on regulated markets have been carried out. Finally, I'd like to inform you that uh, voting at today's AGM will take place uh, by means of communication by the appointed representative of the votes uh, cast by him on the basis of the voting instructions received. The appointed representative is invited to make any statements required by law as well as, uh, when necessary, to ask to the floor for any interventions or questions requested by shareholders. Thank you. So the meeting is uh, duly constituted in the ordinary session and entitled to pass resolutions on the items on the agenda. On April 1st, 2022, the majority shareholder, CDP Reti SPA, when filing the list of candidates for the appointment of corporate bodies, submitted to the company pursuant to Article 126 BIS Paragraph 1 of the uh, CLF for the proposal to appoint Monica Di Virgilis as the chair of the board of directors of SNAM. In addition to the above proposal, the company did not receive any request to supplement the agenda and submit a new resolution proposal pursuant to the law and uh, CLF. On the basis of the circumstances known but to the company and the statements and the legitimacy of the attendees to vote has been verified. I ask the appointed representative to notify pursuant to the provisions of law, regulations in force and the company's article of association the existence of any situations of lack of entitlement to vote or exclusion from voting as well as the existence of any shareholders agreement. This in relation to all votes. Sorry, we cannot hear you. Hello. Yes. We cannot hear you. I'm sorry, you are muted. Can you repeat, please? Hello, you are muted. We cannot hear you. There are no shareholders' agreement except for the agreement pursuant to Article 1 to 2 of the CLF and Article 130 of the regulation adopted by CONSOB, published pursuant to law and currently in place between Casa Depositi Presidi SPA on the one hand and State Grid Europe Limited and State Grid International Develop Development Limited on the other, concerning all the ordinary shares of SNAM held by CDP Reti SPA. Thank you. So there are no further comments. Uh, I ask Professor Marchetti to provide further information uh, for the proceedings. Uh, uh, so 
Further communications. As of the 14th of April 2022 and today, the company holds 9,111,340 treasury shares, equal to approximately 0.27% of the share capital. The company doesn't hold any further treasury shares in its portfolio, not even through subsidiaries. Pursuant to Article 2357, Ter Paragraph 2 of the Italian Civil Code, treasury shares are counted for the purposes of calculating the quorum for constitution and not also the quorum for resolutions of the company's AGM. That said, excluding the indicated treasury shares, 3,351,746,469 ordinary shares are entitled to vote. According to the results of the shareholders' register at, uh, as at uh, 14th of April 2022 and the basis of the information received, the shareholders who directly or indirectly hold shares with voting rights representing more than 3% of the total number of shares are CDP Reti 31.3%, Romano Minozzi 7.4%, Lazar Asset Management 5.3%, BlackRock 5.3%. 1%. Pursuant to Article 105 and 20 of the CLF, those who hold the significant stakes in the company, pursuant to the applicable provision of law and regulations, must notify the company and consob in the event of omission of the aforementioned communications, voting rights may not be exercised. Uh, the appointed representative is therefore requested on behalf of those who may fall under this condition to make this known for all voting. The company is aware of the shareholders' agreement previously indicated by the designated representative between CDP Reti SPA and State Grid Europe Limited and State Grid International Development Limited, also concerning SNAM pursuant to Article 1 to 2 of the CLF. I'd like to inform you that in relation to the right to ask questions pursuant to Article 1 to 7 of the CLF, a number of questions were received prior to the AGM from Marco Bava and Ricomon in accordance with procedures indicated in the notice of call as required. A specific file, which will also be attached, containing the relevant answers, has already been published on the 25th of April on the company's website in a question and answer format. I invite the designated representative to indicate for each vote the number of shares for which it doesn't intend to participate in the vote in the light of the failure to give voting instructions and to make the declarations required by the regulations in force should it vote in a manner different from the instructions voted, uh, received any interest pursuant to Article 135 and Hs. I inform you that Studio Legale Trevisan as appointed representative has declared to the company that it has complied with the confidentiality obligation imposed by CONSOP. The reports of the board containing the proposed resolutions have been filed at the company's registered office and made available to the public on the company's website and at the authorized storage mechanism, e-market storage, within the terms of the law and have been sent to those who have requested them. I uh, also uh, I'd like to inform you that also taking into account uh, the particular way in which this AGM is being held, uh, I uh, uh, want uh, to provide in accordance with Article 8.1 of the SNAM AGM regulation that the vote on each item on the agenda shall take place after the discussion of all the items on the agenda has been concluded. So if the appointed representative uh, is uh, um, uh, agrees, uh, I propose that the number that the items number one and two on the agenda uh, are dealt jointly, and the item numbers five to nine and those uh, from 10 to 12 are dealt with jointly. Of course, even then, the votes will be held separately on each item. I also propose, if the designated representative does not object, that for all the items on the agenda, the reading of the documents will be omitted. However, a brief introduction of the subject matter will be provided and the draft resolutions will be read out. Do you agree? Yes, uh, no oppositions. Let's now move uh, to the discussion of items uh, one and two on the agenda. Professor Marchetti, can you uh, please uh, give us uh, some information? The file containing financial statements uh, uh, 2021, the consolidated financial statements, the director's report on operation, uh, which contains uh, the consolidated non-financial statements, uh, the report of the Board of Statutory Auditors and of the Independent Auditors, uh, as well as the proposals of the Board to the AGM regarding the approval of the financial statements and the allocation of the profits, uh, have been filed at the company's registered office uh, and made available to the public on the website and in uh, our e-market storage uh, 
um, the documentation has been sent to those who have requested it. I refer to the letter to the shareholders and stakeholders, the text of which is contained in the financial report, and I invite Marco Alvera, CEO, to illustrate the activities and highlights of the 2021 financial year. Uh, so for SNAM, uh, the uh, 2021 year has allowed us uh, to reach important uh, targets. Uh, we have reached uh, all the set targets and uh, exceeded uh, the guidance for the net profit uh, by more than 50 million euros, uh, thanks uh, not only to a sound operating performance, uh, but also to the contribution of uh, our uh, subsidiaries. In Italy, we have invested almost 1.3 billion euros uh, which is for us uh, an all-time high. Uh, this is an increase, uh, uh, especially in the field of maintenance and replacement, uh, investments in new business, uh, and uh, the ongoing attention to digitalization and uh, technological innovation in order to increase the reliability of the network and the security and safety of our assets. In 2021, a significant increase uh, was recorded uh, with the new WAC that was defined for the period 2022-2024 uh, that was defined in accordance uh, with the forecast announced uh, to the market and with the hypotheses of our business plan. There are important uh, discussions underway with the regulatory authority in order to try and define uh, the scenario for assets uh, that have already been uh, amortized and depreciated, especially for the definition of new output-based uh, incentives uh, uh, for our uh, dual fuel uh, plants. Uh, so fueled both with gas and electricity, and this will have an important impact on CO2 emissions, thus preparing the network for future evolution uh, with a sector coupling approach. So, in other words, uh, the, more, more, the increasingly frequent interaction between electricity and gas. Again, in 2021, we have significantly consolidated our positioning on uh, energy transition. You may have seen the energy package on hydrogen and biomethane, decarbonized uh, gases. Well, this package has basically confirmed that uh, the hydrogen transportation facilities and infrastructures will be regulated, and uh, we have also shown to the world for the worst for the first time that hydrogen can be stored in our facilities and in our methane ga gas storage facilities our uh, subsidiary denora has uh, uh, submitted a request uh, to be listed on the Italian Stock Exchange and continues uh, to outperform our expectations. Uh, the joint venture, Nucera, that we have with Thyssen uh, is uh, today the number one player uh, with uh, a very high backlog. As far as our energy uh, efficiency platform is concerned, Renovit has received the B Corp certification. As you know, this certificate is granted to companies operating with the highest social transparency and sustainability standards. With Asimpiente, we have acquired a portfolio of assets and projects in the field of biomethane. And as of today, we are amongst the most important players in Europe thus strengthening our positioning on a market which is becoming increasingly important not only from the viewpoint of the environment but also from the diversification of sources and reliability of uh, sources. In terms of uh, strategic progress and performance, the total uh, profitability for SNAM shareholders in 2021 was above 21 percent, twice as much as the performance of the stocks of 600 utility in Europe, which is our benchmark. Looking ahead and uh, going into the details of figures, EBITDA adjusted increased by 2.4 percent, financial charges decreased by 24 million euros, profits from the subsidiaries increased by 45 million euros, and uh, as a consequence, uh, as I said, the net profit increased by 54 million euros, equal to 4.6 percent. 
uh, well, as a consequence, uh, the proposed uh, dividend uh, is equal to 0 0.2620 euros per uh, share for 2021, up 5% uh, versus last year. And this is in line uh, with our expectations. Uh, and uh, the increase in uh, dividends uh, exceeds uh, all market averages in our industry. Dear shareholders, uh, uh, today, my uh, activity in SNAM uh, expires uh, with the second mandate. Uh, uh, I have uh, had uh, six extraordinary years uh, full of transformations with my team. We did a lot to have uh, SNAM grow and uh, be a protagonist in energy transition. In the past uh, six years, uh, we have uh, transformed SNAM into a lean and uh, quick uh, company. We removed uh, two organizational levels. Uh, we recruited about uh, 500 resources uh, with talents uh, from all over the world and great capacities and skills. In the same period, we invested uh, more than 6 billion euros in our facilities and infrastructures, uh, mostly in Italy. We have also extended uh, our uh, geographical footprint uh, by investing in Greece and in the Middle East. We increased uh, profits by 50% uh, and uh, we gave our shareholders uh, back more than 5 billion euros uh, through dividends and uh, uh, the buyback of shares uh, of some shares we have uh enhanced uh, our infrastructure, as I said, uh, that has become more modern, digital, safer, and more interconnected. Somehow we have anticipated uh, the difficult uh, period for the energy sector. Uh, since uh, the very beginning, uh, we have uh, focused uh, on safety of uh, um, energy sources and the diversification of energy uh, sources. We have pursued uh, TAP uh, even in uh, difficult uh, periods and as of today, this is a strategic asset for some, for Italy and for the whole of Europe that can significantly contribute to um, the energy source diversification, which is becoming increasingly com complicated. Let's say uh, we have brought uh, uh, SNAM assets uh, and SNAM in general into the future. For the first time in the world, uh, we have... Um, uh, mm, uh, injected uh, hydrogen into our grid. Uh, the world was observing us, uh, but we have shown that hydrogen can be transported uh, via our gas pipelines and can be stored in our storage facilities. We have launched uh, the industrial sector coupling. Uh, we have been talking about this for years, uh, but we have been the first uh, to decide uh, to build uh, these plants uh, that will be fueled both by electricity and gas, and this will give a contribution to turn uh, in order to release uh, uh, from uh, surcharges uh, and problems. We have launched uh, the first uh, tech hub, which is a, a territorial uh, tech hub for uh, our digital transformation projects. We have a district in, Bolo in Bologna and others uh, will follow. From these hubs, uh, almost everything can be controlled uh, remotely. And we also use uh, drones uh, to control our network. As I said, uh, we have been uh, growing internationally uh, um, uh and uh, we have reached uh, new horizons, uh, diversified uh, our operations, uh, and uh, we have been uh, leading uh, in uh, investing not only in the core business, but also in the energy transition. Uh, during uh, the recent years of the pandemic, uh, the geopolitical problems uh, have highlighted uh, the strategic role of SNAM and of our infrastructures. Uh, we have supported uh, institutions in Italy and uh, in Europe on the debate on energy, providing insights and suggestions for the future. Future. We can say that uh, the core, the uh, focus on the European uh, uh, Recovery and Resilience Plan on green gases uh, was, uh, uh, let's say, drafted here in these rooms in San Donato. As of today, uh, to, um, the fact that we uh, talk about storage, about a closer cooperation between Europe and the United States, uh, the use of hydrogen, of uh, biomethane in our networks, the importance of the Mediterranean, uh, of being uh, present in Africa with solar panel in order to transport uh, renewable energy, this is also owed uh, to SNAM and uh, to its contribution in this debate. In the past few years, uh, sustainability has become uh, a strategic uh, part of our, uh, um, um, a key part of our strategy. We have been uh, the first uh, listed uh, company with an SEG uh, committee, and we were the first uh, listed company to put uh, ECG into our articles of association. Uh, 
uh, isn't liver in the value chain. Our commitment vis-a-vis uh, -vis the environment, uh, well, our strategy has always been uh, focused uh, on uh, carbon neutrality. Uh, we have uh, uh, taken a commitment uh, to reduce uh, direct and indirect uh, emissions, uh, and we want our infrastructures to play a key role in order to reduce uh, emissions uh, from our users. Uh, from a social viewpoint, uh, we have been focusing on our resources, uh, on our communities and areas, also through partnerships uh, with uh, our uh, with authorities uh, on important uh, topics like uh, well-being and uh, gender parity. We're very proud uh, for uh, launching uh, the four-year experimental high school uh, dedicated to uh, the energy transition uh, and uh, environmental uh, friendly approaches. Finally, our governance uh, system uh, focuses on aligning the interests uh, of all our share stakeholders. Uh, 20 percent of the long-term um, uh, uh, remuneration of our managers are linked uh, to sustainability. We have identified 28 KPIs uh, 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 for uh, sustainability in our business. And these indicators uh, will be measured uh, on a yearly basis uh, with very ambitious targets uh, uh, from now to 2025. SNAM is uh, today ideally positioned uh, in order to further contribute uh, to the uh, safety and uh, security of uh, uh, energy uh, delivery, thus uh, contributing to energy transition significantly. We have skills and competencies that are unique in our sector. We have a first mover experience and expertise on innovative projects. We have a diversified portfolio of assets and strategic infrastructures on the most important corridors to guarantee security of provisions and energy transition. We have a strong expertise in the implementation of projects. And this is something I have always been very proud of. And this is my legacy. The um, SNAM has been uh, implementing the investment plan on time and on budget for 14 years in an industry which is well known for delays and exceeding for exceeding the budget. And this is a strength that I have seen in SNAM and that we are contributing to further strengthen. And additionally, we have a very sound financial statement and a very sound financial structure. For uh, all these uh, reasons, uh, today SNAM is at the core of the European energy strategy. And as of today, it can provide a significant contribution to uh, managing the energy trilemma, guaranteeing access uh, to the sources, guaranteeing to uh, more increasingly secure and safety sources, uh, guaranteeing uh, affordable prices uh, and guaranteeing the respect for the environment. Uh, thanks to green gases that it will become cheaper and cheaper, we will be able to solve this trilemma, focusing on sources that are cheaper, safer and less polluting. In conclusion, I really would like to thank the Board of Directors and Nicola Bellin, the Board of Statutory Auditors. We have really worked very well with uh, all our colleagues in SNAM and uh, this uh, three-year period has been very important, uh, uh, very challenging and uh, uh, but I think uh, we have uh, provided an important contribution, uh, contribution not only on the numbers that I have shown, but also uh, for uh, the country and uh, the areas in which we operate, uh, thanks to our infrastructures. Uh, I wish uh, the management, uh, the remaining directors and the new directors uh, profitable work. I uh, say goodbye to Monica and to others. I think uh, all the conditions are in place uh, to move forward uh, along this a successful path. Thank you to the CEO, Marco Alvera, and thank you for your words and all your acts in these six years. I recall the conclusion contained in the report of the Board of Statutory Auditors, uh, as well as uh, in the audit uh, company on the uh, accounts. So, Professor Marchetti, please read the proposals of resolutions uh, and uh, 
voting uh, through the designated representatives. So the financial statements, these are the proposals. First off, uh, shareholders, uh, you are now invited to approve the financial statements for the year uh, at the end of December 2021 of SLAM that closes with a profit of 957,433,208.27 euros. With respect uh, to the profit, uh, the resolution will be the shareholders, uh, you're invited to allocate the profit for the year of 612,634,884.74 euros, uh, which remains uh, after the distribution of the interim dividend uh, for the financial year 2021 of 0.1048 euros per share resolved by the board on uh, the 3rd of November 21 as follows. Uh, two shareholders uh, as dividend 0.1572 euros per share to the shares outstanding on the ex-dividend date, excluding treasury shares held in portfolio at that date. As the balance of the interim dividend allocating the amount remaining uh, to the retained earnings reserve. The dividend for 2021 is therefore calculated between the interim dividend and the balance at 0.2620 euros per share. To pay the balance of the dividend of 0.1572 per share from 22nd of June, with the record date on the 21st of June and uh, dividend ex dividend date 20th uh, June. I ask the appointed representative whether there are any interventions by the shareholders or questions on items one and two on the agenda. Thank you. No questions or proposals have been made by those entitled. with respect to items one and two on the agenda. Thank you. Uh, let's move on to the third uh, item, um, considering uh, the expiration of the 18 months uh, for the authorization to purchase resolved by the ordinary shareholders meeting on the 28th of April 21, as well as the continued existence of the reasons underlying the same. The board proposes that the shareholders renew the authorization to purchase and dispose uh, of treasury shares for a further period of 18 months for the purposes under the terms and according to the manners and procedures indicated in the board of directors uh, explanatory report. Uh, so, Professor Marchetti, please read the proposal and do whatever is necessary. So, in summary, the proposal is to revoke the previous resolution authorizing the purchase of treasury shares and then to authorize the board of directors for the maximum duration of 18 months to purchase treasury shares for a maximum of 500 million and up to a maximum limit of shares in portfolio of 6.8. 5% of the subscribed and paid off share capital. And then there is also penalty of treatment and the procedures applicable uh, for the purchase. And the resolution uh, says uh, that the amount for the purchase of treasury shares in accordance uh, with the uh, articles uh, 5 and 13 of your regulation 596 2014 should exceed 5% as compared to the reference price on the Euro Next Milano market organized and managed by Borsa in the session preceding its individual transaction. As for item three, there is the same authorization to the board to perform acts of sale of the uh, treasury shares, establishing the manners. And finally, to confer upon the board and the CEO uh, the authority to execute the resolution. Once more, we ask the designated representative if there are persons wishing to speak on this. I confirm that no one wishes to make proposals or speak on these items of the agenda. Okay, let's move on to item four. That has two parts. 
the first report on remuneration policy with a binding resolution being required and the second report on the remuneration pad with a non-binding resolution being required under TUF and the issuer's regulation SNAM board has prepared the report on remuneration policy and compensation pad in 2022 which was filed at the company's registered office with Borsa Italiana and published on the company's website uh, as well as uh, uh, on e-market storage. Uh, with respect uh, uh, to this item on the agenda, we will have two separate and distinct uh, voting sessions based upon the proposals that will be made. I remind you of the contents of the letter to the shareholders uh, that uh, describes uh, manners uh, for voting and I invite uh, Miss Francesca Pace, head of the remuneration committee, to illustrate uh, the main contents. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At the end of our three-year mandate, I'd like to thank the members of the committee, Professor Rolli and the lawyer, Mr. Tonetti, and Ms. Patrini, the statutory auditor that followed us for their commitment and activity in order to give to the company the remuneration policies and tools that make it more and more competitive on the market. The committee has executed remuneration activities to define a policy for 2022 that ensures an alignment of the interest of the management uh, to uh, those of the shareholders and the other stakeholders uh, supporting uh, the pursuit uh, of the strategic targets of the new business plan 21-25 presented to the market uh, in the month of November last year. In 2021, we've asked uh, Col Ferre to uh, verify the remuneration positions of uh, the leadership teams uh, of the group. So we've identified two different panels, a national one and integrated one. So as to be able to verify the positioning of the company, the comparison analysis made on those samples as well as on those identified at the beginning of the mandate, I've highlighted the adoption by SNAM of a remuneration characterized by the predominance of the variable component, most especially in the long term, for all of the roles that have a higher impact on the company results in line with the best market practices. In the implementation of the remuneration policy approved annually, the committee monitors the evolution of the strategic plan of the company to translate the goals inside the incentive-based systems. The variable short-term incentive plan shows these challenges, ensuring the correlation with economic and financial companies of the company and sustainability topics. So the committee has proposed to the board when defining the short-term plan to link a part of the premium to strategic projects that the company is called upon to pursue for 2022 to ensure uh, the security of gas sourcing in Italy in the light of uh, the Russia-Ukraine war. With respect to the long term, the main goal remains that of uh, addressing the management towards achieving the strategic goals by promoting at the same time the creation of sustainable value in the mid to long term for the shareholders in line with the corporate purpose. And thanks to the steady and fruitful collaboration with the ESG committee, whom I think we have confirmed the weighting of 20% of the ESG uh, goals that have been made even more challenging as compared to last year. I trust that the commitment of the committee and the choices made in line with the remuneration policy approved in the latest AGM can once more be appreciated and understood with the support that will be given to the remuneration policy proposed for 2022. I'd like to thank the chairman, the CEO, and all of the colleagues for these three years. Thank you, Ms. Pace. So I ask Professor Marchetti to proceed with the reading 
and uh, with the intervention. So we have section one, uh, where the resolution is having examined uh, the remuneration of policy and the demands paid in 2022 as prepared by the board of the company and uh, the several regulations and having examined and discussed in particular the first section of the foresaid report uh, containing pursuant to uh, uh, paragraph three or one, two, three, an illustration of the company's policy on the remuneration of the members of the board the chief executive officer and the general manager and the executives with strategic responsibilities and the members of the board of statutory auditors with reference to 2022, as well as the procedures used for the adoption and implementation of the said policy. Considering that pursuant to the combined provisions of uh, paragraphs 3 bis and 3 ter of 123 of CLF, this is a binding decision. The resolution will be to approve the first section of the report on remuneration policy and compensation paid in 2022 of NAM SPA, prepared by the company's board of directors pursuant to Article 123 Ter, Paragraph 3 of Legislative Decree 58 of 1998. Um, Mr. Trevisan, anyone wishes to speak? Thank you. No. No one wishes to speak or make proposals. No one of those entitled. Let's move on with section two, with the reading of the resolution as usual. So having read the remuneration policy and compensation paid in 2022 as examined, and having examined the second section of this report containing under paragraph four of article 123 ter, an indication of the amounts paid to the board members, the CEO and the general managers, and those with strategic responsibilities for the letter in aggregate form and the members of the Board of Statutory Auditors for 2021 and considering that pursuant to paragraph 6 of article 123 ter, uh, the vote uh, of the shareholders meeting on the aforementioned second part is non-binding. The resolution is to vote in favor of the second section of the report on the remuneration policy and compensation paid in 2022 of SNAM as prepared by the company's board pursuant to article 123 ter paragraph 4 of TUF. And on that, we ask a confirmation from Mr. Trevisan if anyone wishes to speak. Thank you. No one wishes to speak or make proposals on this item of the agenda. Let's move on uh, to items from five to nine. As is well known with today's meeting, uh, uh, the mandate uh, comes to an end that was confirmed on the 2nd of April 2019 to the current board of the company and that article 13.1 of the bylaws provides uh, that the board includes a number of members not less than five and not more than nine as appointed by the shareholders meeting on the basis of the lists or slates submitted by the shareholders. I would also remind you that uh, the members uh, can be appointed for not more than three financial years and come to an end uh, with the AGM call to approve the financial statements for the last financial year of their office. Pursuant to Article 14.10 of the bylaws, the chairman of the board of directors is elected by the shareholders meeting and if the letter has not done so, the board elects uh, uh, the chairman from among its members. Under Article 18.1 of the bylaws, the directors are entitled on an annual basis and for the period of their office, uh, the remuneration determined by the AGM, which remains valid uh, uh, up until uh, the AGM resolves otherwise. For any other information on these items, uh, please refer to re the uh, illustratory report prepared by the report. Professor Marchetti, please read and do what is necessary. So as regards the number of components, the proposal is that with respect to the foregoing, you are invited to approve the proposal to set the number of directors to be appointed at nine. As for the duration in relation to the above, you're invited to approve the proposal to set the term of office in three years with an expiration at the AGM called to approve the accounts at the end of 2024. As for the appointment of directors, Article 13 of the bylaws says that the board is appointed on the basis of lists. A first list was presented by GDP Reti. 31.35% of the capital is composed of Monica De Virgili, Stefano Venier, 
Kim Jin Chen, Massimo Bergami, Augusta Iannini, Alessandro Tonetti, Francesca Fonzi. Some analysts related to institutional investors with 1.36% of the capital approximately have uh, presented uh, jointly a second list uh, comprised of Piero Manzoni, Rita Rolli, Laura Cavatorta. In relation to the provisions of concept communication of 2020, 2009, the list submitted by institutional investors is accompanied by declarations certifying the absence of relationships of connection and or significant relations under Article 147 Terce, Paragraph 3 of TUF and Article 144 of the issuer's regulations. And these lists have been made available to the public at the SNAM's registered office and on e-market storage. Mr. Chairman, the proposal is that the shareholders are invited to um, vote uh, on the appointment uh, as chairman of the board of directors or one of the directors previously appointed pursuant to item seven on the agenda. In the absence of a specific proposal in this regard, um, we read out the resolution proposal referred to above and submitted by the shareholder GDP Rati when filing its list of candidate directors at the company's registered office pursuant to article 126 bis paragraph one of TUF, uh, i.e. the shareholders meeting of SNAM resolves to appoint Monica De Virgilis as chairman of the board of directors. Finally, with respect to the fee, the proposal is in relation to the above, you're invited to approve the proposal to set the gross annual remuneration due to each director uh, at 70,000 euros plus the reimbursement of the expenses incurred in relation to their office, also confirming the authorization to extend the directors and officers insurance policy to each director in accordance with the terms and under the conditions illustrated in the Board of Directors report. I ask the designated representative if uh, for these items uh, five through nine, anyone wishes to speak or make proposals. Uh, thank you. No one wishes to speak or make proposals with these, respect to these items of the agenda. Thank you. Let's move on to items from 10 to 12 on the agenda today. The Board of Statutory Auditors comes to an end. It was uh, appointed uh, on the 2nd of April 2019. So uh, we have to appoint the new Board of Statutory Auditors based upon the lists presented by the shareholders. Uh, um, in accordance with the TUF uh, and the bylaws, the shareholders are also invited to appoint as chairman of the Board of Statutory Auditors uh, the standing auditor elected in accordance with the procedures set and uh, um, from the candidates indicating the minority list uh, that obtained the highest number of votes. I finally, I remind you that under Article 2402 of the Italian Civil Code uh, and Article 20.1 of the Articles of Association, um, you have indications on the amounts. So for any further information on items from 10 to 12 on the agenda, please refer to the related report prepared by the Board. Professor Marchetti, please proceed with the reading of the proposals and do whatever necessary. Under Article 20, uh, the Board of Statutory Auditors is appointed uh, based upon the list. The list of candidates presented by HDP rate is as follows. Statutory Auditors, Gianfranco Chinellato Ines Gandini, Alternate Auditors, Maria Gimigliano and Federico Sambolino. The shareholders, uh, relating to the institutional investors referred to earlier, presented a list with one candidate for statutory auditors, Stefano Gnocchi, and as alternate auditor, they have indicated Federica Albizzati. In relation to the list of statutory auditors, the list presented by institutional investors uh, is accompanied uh, by statements that define the absence uh, of uh, relationships of connection and or significant relations as per Article 148. They've been uh, made uh, available to the public at the registered office of the company and through e-market storage uh, according to the law including uh, resumes. As for the proposal uh, relating to the chairman in agreement uh, with Article 148 
two bits of TUF and Article 20.3 of the bylaws, you're invited to appoint the chairman of the board of statutory auditors and the sending auditor elected in accordance with the procedure set for the election of the board directors in Article 13.5, letter B of the Articles of Association from those candidates indicating the minority list that obtained the highest number of votes in the, uh, in the event of absence for any reasons of minority lists. You're invited to appoint as chairman uh, the candidate proposed by the shareholders elected in the manner set forth under Article 20.3 of the bylaws. Lastly, as regards um, the remuneration, according to the foregoing, you're invited to determine the gross annual amount for the chairman of the statutory auditors and each uh, auditor, uh, respectively at 80,000 euros and 60,000 euros plus expenses, confirming also the authorization to extend the director's and officer's insurance policy according to the terms illustrated in the board report. We ask Mr. Trevisan if anyone wishes to speak or make proposals or if there are any further indications. No, I have no one wishes to speak with respect to these items. Okay, I'd like to specify that in contrast with what was said at the beginning, Mr. Tonetti is not present at today's meeting. So the discussion is closed and we can move on with the voting. Okay, so first off, we would like to ask the designated representative if uh, he has the voting instructions for all of the shares for which a proxy has been given. Yes, I confirm I have uh, voting instructions for all shares uh, for which I've been granted a proxy. Uh, does it uh, hold true for all the resolutions? Yes, it does. Okay, so that uh, we're not going to repeat it uh, 12 times. So let's start with item number one, which is the approval of the financial statements. <clears throat> Thank you. So in favor, 2,485,431,974 shares equal to 99.21% of the share capital. In the minute, so we will also include uh, the following uh, decimals: so two million ninety-four thousand uh, uh, shares uh, abstain, uh, equal to 004 percent, against uh, fifteen million four hundred eighty-eight thousand two hundred ninety point ninety-two percent of the capital. Non-voting: uh, two million three hundred and twelve thousand. Uh, 900 uh, equal uh, shares are uh, equal to 0 0.005 of the shared capital. So the proposal number one is uh, approved uh, by majority, as we uh, heard uh, from the designated representative. Uh, and uh, so voting instructions uh, hold true for all the resolutions. And let's now move on with item number two, the allocation of profits. Thank you. So in favor, 2,498,729,435 shares equal to 99.73% of the represented capital, abstained 42,117 shares equal to a minor, uh, a tiny uh, percentage against uh, 4,239,156 shares, equal to 0 016 percent of the uh, represented capital, non-voting, 2,312,995 shares, equal to 0 0.09 percent of the capital. Right, so the proposal by the board is approved by majority as uh, uh, the designated representative uh, um, uh, communicated. Uh, item number three, so concerning Treasury stock, please. Thank you. In favour, 2,496, uh, sorry, 2,496,395,774 shares equal to 99 
1.64% of the capital, abstained 1,413,784 shares, equal to 0.056% of the capital, against 4,308,650 shares, equal to 0.17% of the represented capital, non-voting, 3,205,495 shares, equal to 0.13% of the represented capital. Okay, thank you. So the proposal under item number three is approved by majority. Item number four, 4.1. So report on the remuneration policy first section, and this is a binding resolution. Thank you. In favor. 2,433,342,114 shares, equal to 97.13% of the represented capital, abstained 4,521,767 shares, equal to 0.18% of the capital, against 65,146,827 shares, equal to 2.6% of the capital, non-voting 2,000,000 312,195 shares, equal to 0.09% of the represented capital. Thank you. Okay, the proposal is approved by majority. Now, 4.2, uh, non-binding resolution on the second section of the aforementioned report. In favour, 2,452,250,000 721 shares, equal to 97.88% of the represented capital, abstained 5,599,625 shares, equal to 0.22% of the represented capital, against 45,160,362 uh, shares, equal to 1.8% of the capital, non-voting 2,312,195 shares, equal to 0.09% of the represented capital. Thank you. So with the approval of the non-binding resolution, now we have concluded item number four. Now item number five, determination of the number of uh, uh, directors of the components of the board. In favour, 2,502,968,591 shares, equal to 99.91% of the represented capital, abstained 42,117 shares, equal to a tiny percentage, non-voting 2,312,195 shares, equal to 0.09% of the represented capital. There are no votes against. Well, so the proposal is approved. Item number six, determination of the term of office of the directors for three financial, financial years is the proposal. Thank you. In favour, 2,490,347,267 shares, equal to 99.40% of the capital, abstained 42,117 shares, equal to a very tiny share, against 12,621,324 shares, equal to point. 50% of the share of the capital non-voting 2,312,195 shares equal to 0.09% of the uh, represented capital. Thank you very much. Let's now move to item number seven on the agenda, which is uh, the vote to the lista, so the appointment of the directors. Thank you. In favour of slate number one, one billion three hundred twenty nine million two hundred eleven thousand two hundred sixty seven shares, equal to fifty three point zero six percent of the represented capital. In favour of uh, slate number two, one billion one hundred and seventy one million seventy three thousand one hundred and eighty shares, equal to forty six point seventy four percent of the represented capital. Abstentions, uh, 4 million uh, on all the slates. 
uh, 4 million 164,147 shares, equal to 0.17% uh, of the represented capital against uh, all the slates, uh, 843,909 shares, uh, equal to 0.03% of the shared capital. Non-voting, 31,200 shares, uh, equal to a uh, very small share of the represented capital. Okay, so uh, considering uh, the votes uh, cast, uh, the uh, directors appointed for a three-year term until the AGM convened to approve the financial statements on the 31st of December 2024. Monica De Virgili, Stefano Venier, Kinshin Shen, Massimo Bergamin, uh, Augusta Iannini, Alessandro Tonetti, Piero Manzoni, Rita Rolli, Laura Cavatorta. Let's now move to item number eight, which is the appointment of the chairman of the board, uh, according to the aforementioned proposal. Thank you. In favor, 2,495,372,827 shares, equal to 99.60% of the represented capital. Abstentions are 3 million six hundred eighty-five. Uh, 1,117, uh, equal to 0.15% uh, of the capital, against uh, 2,346,764, equal to 0.09% of the capital, non-voting, 3,118,195, equal to 0.16% of the represented capital. So the board is uh, composed of the aforementioned members, uh, with Monica Di Virgilis as the head, as the chair of the board. Now, item number nine, the last part concerning the directors, the uh, remuneration according to the aforementioned proposal. <clears throat> In favor, 2,487,687,710 shares, equal to 99.30% of the represented capital. Abstained, uh, 641,197 shares, equal to 0.03% of the represented capital. Against, uh, 14,681,001 share, equal to 0.59% of the represented capital. Non-voting, 2,312,195 shares, equal to 0.09% of the represented capital. Good, so the proposal is approved. Let's now move to the auditors, item number 10 on the agenda. The results of uh, the uh, vote by slate for the um, um, Statutory auditors in favor of slate number one, two billion two hundred forty three million eight hundred forty two thousand two hundred thirty nine shares, equal to eighty nine point fifty six percent of the represented capital. In favor of slate number two, two hundred and forty million four hundred ninety three thousand six hundred eighty eight shares, equal to nine. 0.60% of the represented capital. Abstentions are from all the slates. 435,351 shares equal to 0.02% of the capital against 10,342,351 shares equal to 0.41% of the represented capital. Non-voting 10,210,000 74 shares, equal to 0.41% of the represented capital. Thank you. Well, so also as far as uh, item number 11 is concerned, uh, concerning the appointment uh, of the chairman of the Board of Statutory Auditors, uh, we can say that uh, the board is composed of uh, Stefano Gnocchi, Chair, Gianfranco Chinellato, Ines Ganditi, Gandini, alternate auditors Federica Albizzanti, Maria Gimigliano and Federico Sambolino. Uh, let's finally move uh, to the uh, determination of the remuneration for the chair men and uh, the uh, regular auditors uh, based on the proposals that uh, we have uh, read in favor 2 billion 502 million 52,110 shares equal to 99.87% of the represented capital abstained 
402,710 shares equal to 0.02% of the capital against 555,088 shares equal to 0.02% of the represented capital, non-voting 2,312,195 shares equal to 0.09% of the represented capital. Mr. Chairman, this proposal has been approved as well, and so I give the floor back to you. Thank you very much. Let me take the chance uh, of uh, personally thanking the Board of Directors uh, and uh, the withdrawing Board of Statutory Auditors for the profitable work uh, being done uh, during uh, these uh, past years. And also thank you uh, very much uh, for your leadership. I'd like to thank the entire SNAM management team. And I also would like to thank the shareholders for their trust and I wish good luck and a profitable work for the new board of directors. I now declare the proceedings closed at 12 past 11 a.m. Thank you.